Hey folks, this is Vince with Dad's Gaming Addiction, and today we're going to look at the Hare and the Tortoise. Now, this is a family-friendly game, as you uh, may have guessed. It's for two to five players for ages seven and up, and the average play time is about 20 minutes. Now, just to quickly sum this game up, uh, most of you know the story of the tortoise and the hare. You know, how the uh, rabbit got really far ahead, but uh, he was so overconfident and cocky that he fell asleep and the tortoise ended up winning the race. Well, this is sort of like the sequel to that. Uh, you've got three other animals that are added to the mix. You've got a wolf, a fox, and a lamb. And players will be placing bets on these di five different animals to see who would win the race. And the player that ends up uh, picking correctly and earning the most points will end up winning the game. So without further ado, let's take a quick look at the components and see how the game is played. Okay, now here's a brief snapshot of the components. I'm going to go ahead and show you the box this time around, just because I thought it looked cool. It looks like a storybook. The downside is that I'm going to have trouble trying to find anything that stacks uh, neatly along with this. Um, you've got these tiles here that serve as your racetrack. You've got a finish line here. Now, before I go any further, there's some assembly required. Um, as is the case with uh, yellow games, as I've come to learn, like Steam Park, there's assembly out the wazoo. And that's one thing that I have to complain about again. Um, this is your podium that players will be uh, putting the animals on once they cross the finish line. Th that has to be assembled. There's no reason for this, really. I mean, this is a pain in the ass to put together, and they don't stay together all that well. There's no reason why this couldn't come pre-assembled. It's just lazy. Um, stickers. You had to peel off the stickers and put them on the meeples themselves. They couldn't come pre-made for you. And the stickers didn't peel off of the sheet very easily, so some of them ripped. Again, it's just... Was, I mean, it's not as bad as Steam Park, mind you, because there aren't as many components, but it's just... I don't know what it is with Yellow Games. It's just some of their games and some of their components. It's just the design is lazy and cheap, if you ask me. But uh, the games themselves are fine, but the components suck. Anyway, getting back to this, uh, before I go off on a rant. Um, you've got your first player marker here. Uh, you've got these bonus tokens for the games variant, which I'm not sure if I'm going to go over or not. Just suffice it to say that there's an easier version of the rules in the manual for first-time players or uh, smaller kids. You've got different cards over here. These are your betting cards. I'll explain what they do later. You've got these racing cards here, and you've got these quick reference cards. Okay, now this is a quick look at game setup. I'm just going to quickly blow through this. You've got your animal pawns up here, your start line. Players will shuffle these uh, racetrack tiles and lay them out in a random order like this. Your configuration may be different. You've got the finish line and the podium here. Again, I didn't bother constructing mine because they piss me off. As far as the bet cards go, there are five of them. Each player is dealt one at random. Now, each bet card will have one of the five animals on it. You want to keep that hidden from other players so that they can't sabotage you during the game. This card will score you points at the end of the game. So, um, it's also worth mentioning real quick that in a two-player game, each player will get two of these cards. Any unused ones are just simply put back into the box. Okay, now after that, players will go ahead and shuffle the race deck and deal seven to each player. They'll go ahead and take a look at their hands, choose one card, and put it on top of or next to their bet card. And that'll serve as a second bet card for the end of the game scoring. So let's just quickly do that now. It could be the same animal type, it could be a different animal type, whatever players want. Again, these cards are ultimately going to score you points at the end of the game should that animal win. So last but not least, every player will receive one of these player raid cards. And the first player is chosen. I think the first player that can correctly say what time it is um, at that point in time will get to be first player. On a player's turn, they'll have to play one to four cards from their hand, and they have to depict the same animal. So let's just quickly take a look at this hand and see what kind of cards we have. And let's just say, for the sake of argument, granted, you, you'll want to look at your cards here, your bet cards, to see what animals you, you're trying to get to win. But um, just for example purposes, let's just say that this player decides to play two of these fox cards. They are played face up onto the table. And again, they have to depict the same animal. Once that's done, the other players will follow suit in turn. I'll go ahead and take a look at their hands, and they'll play so many cards face up. Uh, we've got two of this here, so we're just going to go ahead and play two of these. And this player over here is going to take a look at his hand, or her hand, and I guess we'll play two of these fox cards. 
Now this will continue with players playing cards until one of two conditions prompt the racing phase. Now what will happen is if there are four cards of the same animal on the table, no more, no less, there cannot be more than four of the same animal. So if this player had two here and this player had three foxes, he could not play all three foxes. He could only play up to four. So you've got a total of four here. Whenever you have four of the same animal on the table, that'll signal the uh, this end of this particular phase and we'll move on to the, the racing phase. The other way that you can signal the racing phase is if you have eight cards on the table, no more, no less. So again, if you have seven cards on the table, um, and uh, you're trying to put down two, you can't do it. You can't play more than eight cards ever. So once um, either eight cards are on the table or four of the same animal is on the table, that'll signal this particular phase's end, and you'll move on to the racing phase. All right, now the racing phase is when the animals get to move based on the cards that are on the table. And as you can see here, each of the different animals have their own movement rules. I'm not going to go over all of them, but I'll list off a few examples. The rabbit here, for example, if one to four cards are on the table, then it'll get to move two spaces ahead. If it is in first place, however, and four cards are played on the rabbit, then it'll move zero spaces. It'll take a nap. So the tortoise is another example. It uh, moves one space ahead whenever zero through three cards are showing. If four cards are showing on the table, then it'll move two spaces ahead. The wolf is a special case. As you can see, it's a little complicated. There are three of these howling cards in the deck, and basically it prevents all of the other animals from moving. So this can be a pretty powerful character depending on the circumstances. And that's pretty much all there is to it. Players will continue taking turns um, playing cards, refilling their hand from the deck up to six cards until the racing phase is triggered. They'll move the animals appropriately and then rinse and repeat. Play more cards, take some from the deck to replenish the hand until the certain conditions are met move the animals again until three animals cross the finish line again first second and third place now the way that works is if uh, players look at their bet cards to see what they have uh, in this case this player has the rabbit and the fox so he's going to want the rabbit and the fox to win if the player manages to do that they'll get so many points for first place their um, animal will earn them five points for second place it's three points and for third place it's two points so Either both of your animals may win, one of your animals may win, or none of your animals may win. It all depends. And players will go ahead and add up their score, and whoever has the most wins. All right, and there you have it. A very brief look at the hare and the tortoise. Now, it's important to note that I didn't cover all of the rules found in the manual, but this should just give you a nice general overview as far as how the game is played and may give you an idea as to whether or not you might want to pick it up for yourself and your family. So, what did I think? Well, um, components aside, it's a pretty fun game. Uh, you wouldn't think of it, there's a little bit of bluffing in this game uh, besides the racing mechanic. Again, players will have these bet cards and um, the other players won't know what you have and you don't know what the other players have. So you're going to be trying to get rid of the cards that are in your hand. Uh, my hands are all over the place, I'm Italian, I can't help it. So I'm knocking everything over. Um, but, <laughs> what was I? Um, yeah. Players will have these bet cards, and they'll be trying to get rid of the cards that they don't want in their hand without helping the other players advance. I'm going to have to put this down before I knock it over. <laughs> players are going to have to be trying to get rid of the cards that are in their hand without helping the other players along. Um, and to do that, you might uh, utilize the wolf mechanic, for example, that I was talking about earlier. Whenever the wolf howls, none of the other cards... Uh, matter and none of the animals move. So you might want to get rid of, say, your tortoise cards or your rabbit cards, whatever cards that you don't have that you're, uh, as far as your bets are concerned, you can get rid of them then because the animals won't move anyway. So there's different ways to uh, get unwanted cards out of your hand. It's all about the timing and the strategy on that. And there's still a little bit of luck involved because you're drawing a random bet card in the beginning and you're drawing cards as you play the game. But uh, so there's a mix of strategy, mix of luck. It's family friendly, relatively easy to play, supports up to five players, so this is definitely a great family friendly game. The price point I think is a little high for the uh, quality of the components. I think you can find it for like 25 or 30 bucks on Amazon. So again, I don't know why yellow games will sometimes require you to construct the most odd and mundane things. Uh, the podium, for example, could have come pre-constructed. These um, meeples could have come with the stickers on them already or just shaped like the appropriate animal. It's just lazy. 
But other than that, besides the components, the game is pretty fun. So if you haven't already, you can check out my written review, www.dadsgamingaddiction.com. Subscribe to my YouTube channel, that way you can keep up to date on any new content I've been to publish. This is Vince, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.